What's going on, guys? Welcome to Sector for Nerds, and welcome to another episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars Retro Discussions. Today, we're going to be talking about Season 3, Episode 3, Supply Lines. This episode was directed by Brian Colin O'Connell and written by Stephen Melching and Egon Mahoney. The cookie for this episode, where there's a will, there's a way. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. A lot of great content going up right now, you guys. Definitely don't want to miss out on any of it. All right, without any further ado, intro guy, let us know what's going down for this episode. A world under siege. The Separatists have launched a massive offensive against the planet Ryloth. A blockade of deadly battleships has cut off any support for the dwindling Republic defenses. Though they have fought valiantly with the help of Twi'lek freedom fighter Chem Sandula, hope is fading for Jedi Master Dai and his men as the droid army closes in. Now my first reaction to this episode when I was watching it back in the day on Cartoon Network was, oh, we're going back to Ryloth, cool. Now for as many hints as there were throughout this episode, it did take me a little bit to finally realize that this episode was a prequel episode. Because this isn't a prequel story for just one, but two different stories from Clone Wars Season 1. The first of which being the Ryloth arc, and the other of which being the episode where Yoda goes to Toydaria. So let me kind of explain what's going down here, right? Like, the Separatists, they're taking over Ryloth, the people are beginning to starve, it, it ain't turning out good for them. So the Jedi want Bail Organa to go to try and make an arrangement with Toydaria to be able to send supply ships over to Ryloth to help them. Unfortunately for Bail Organa, the Separatists ended up intercepting that transmission, and we get a scene with Count Dooku. I feel like it's been a minute since we've seen him. We intercepted a coded transmission between Senator Organa and the Jedi Council. We were able to partially unscramble it. The Jedi have sent Senator Organa to Toydaria to negotiate a treaty which would allow them to send relief supplies to their forces on Ryloth. Send a message to Senator Lot Dodd of the Trade Federation. I wish to speak with him immediately. Jar Jar was there, who knows why, but at the end of the day, Senator Amidala couldn't leave the Senate, so unfortunately it was just, uh, unfortunately for Bale, it was just Representative Binks that was there. So Bale had to carry most of the weight for this one. But then King Katuko talks about how Toydaria is a neutral system and not part of the Republic. And I'm like, but wait a second, no, but you are part of the Republic. I saw you join them. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I will be joining the Republic. This whole episode is essentially about, like, this debate between Bale and Lot Dodd about why Tordaria should help the Republic or why they shouldn't. I think once King Kachuko saw the transmission from Own Free Ta about how much his people needed help, I think in his mind right there, he kind of knew like, crap, we need to, we need to help these people. It's the right thing to do. But when he reaches his verdict, he realizes that, you know, for the sake of his people, Tordaria has to remain neutral. But then as Bale and Jar Jar walking away, he kind of just goes to them discreetly and says, look, Tordaria cannot turn a blind eye on those that need help. And he says, you may use Toydaria to transport the supplies that you brought with you. Which Bale says, but that's only going to be good for one, perhaps two rotations. But King Katuka's like, look, it's going to have to do. And you have to guarantee that the Trade Federation can't link me to this relief mission. To which Bale has an idea. And it leads to this dinner scene where Jar Jar has to do this entertainment to distract them. And he's like just taking all this perfectly good looking food. It looked like some chicken, some berries. He's dumping it all on the ground. He's taking the plates and just spinning them around and being like a freaking circus clown. <laughs> I don't know, but, but by the end of it, like, he had everybody applauding. They were all like, oh, brilliant, brilliant. This is great. Awesome, awesome. Lot Dodd's assistant was just sitting there like, that was amazing. Oh my gosh, great job. <laughs> Meanwhile, as Bale is, like, loading the transports and they're getting him out of there without Lot Dodd noticing. <laughs> what are you looking at? Misa, look at nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. Misa, look at nothing. Misa uh, are creating and sharing Gungan ritual style art with Trade Federation to promote love and understanding. 
And then there's the other side to this episode with uh, Master I'm a Gun Guy, which is the funniest name of all time that foreshadows his own death at the end of the episode. Early on, the right flank ends up collapsing, so they can't get out that way. And there's only one gunship. But they decide, okay, let's take this gunship, we'll turn it into a bomb to collapse the left flank, so then they can only come from one direction, which in that case, we can provide cover for the Twi'leks while they escape with their families over the mountain. Cham Syndulla is a little upset about this. I actually like the conversation between Gundai and Gobi, who's one of, uh, like, Cham's fellow mates that we meet in Season 1. I appreciated it because it really showed, like, why Cham was so hesitant to get help from the Jedi in that arc. Again, I understand why they do this with episodes and, and whatnot, to be able to go back and tell stories to explain certain things. I just, I don't always like it when they do this stuff where they tell stories out of order. I'm telling you, Disney Plus just put the chronological order on there. Like, we all know it exists at this point. You can go on StarWars.com to find it. Just save us a couple steps and have it already available to us. But eventually we get this battle between Amagundai, Captain Keely, and his clone squadron up against the droids. And you kind of knew, like, all right, I got a feeling like eventually these guys are going to end up losing. Like, this battle isn't necessarily about winning. It's just about holding off the enemy so the Twi'leks can escape. A lot of the clones end up getting taken out early on, so it kind of just comes down to General Die. But then Keeley gets up for a moment, he's like, I'm not finished yet, sir, we can do this, General. And he's, Gundai says, let's make the end memorable. But then, eventually, they all end up dying. Man, if uh, Gundai would have had Ahsoka's training for, like, blocking blaster bolts in all different directions, he probably would have been alright. But the relief supplies get there, so the people are happy, but I do think that Sham was kind of able to see through it all. Because in his mind, it's like, well, why didn't the Republic send reinforcements to help us? And if the supplies only last for a rotation or two, in his mind, it's probably like, well, this ain't gonna help us much. But again, it also explains why he was so hesitant to help Mace Windu in that season one episode. And the end of the episode, uh, Lot Dodd goes up to King Katuko and Bail Organa, Jar Jar's standing there too. I've just received word that a fleet of supply ships broke past the block Cade. And Bill says, look, if the Trade Federation has violations of, of any treaties, you're welcome to present it in front of the full Senate. And he just goes, it takes years for the Senate to decide everything. And he just kind of looks at Bale, and then he looks at King Katuko, and then he just looks over at Jar Jar, who's smiling and waving. And it's kind of like in that moment where he knows, like, damn it, they got me. Like, he knew he, he got him there. And he just goes, you play a dangerous game, Morgana. Next time, you won't get away with it. Just Jar Jar standing there waving just gets me to laugh every time. And then King Katuko goes, well, perhaps it's time I reconsider our neutrality. Tell the Jedi that I'm open to negotiating with them. When I was watching this episode for the first time, the, the moment where I finally realized... Oh, this is a prequel episode. You probably could have figured that out earlier, but whatever. So, I don't know, you guys. This was a fine little episode. There really wasn't much to it. It tells the story, it tells a prequel story to two different episodes in season one. It gets Jar Jar back, gets some more, uh stuff with Bail Organa, since we haven't gotten much of him yet. We get to see characters like King Katuko or Cham Sandula that, you know, we get to build on a little bit more there. Yeah, really don't have much more to say about it. That is gonna wrap us up for this week, you guys. Next week, we are gonna be talking about Season 3, Episode 4, Sphere of Influence. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with others to help support the channel, and I will see you guys next time. I don't like the situation on Pantora one bit. It reminds me far too much of Naboo's unscarred history. Well, that blockade wasn't that bad. It's the reason I met you, after all. <sighs> you certainly have a unique way of looking at things, Annie. Senator Amidala, Master Skywalker. What is it, Ahsoka? Someone has kidnapped Chairman Papanoida's daughters. <laughs>